peoples of this place, now known as Australia. We are grateful for the continuing care of the lands, waterways and skies where we listen, learn and play. From here on, Ghana country, where I love to walk my dog, and from wherever you are listening, we respect the elders of the past, present, and we share our friendship and kindness. Hi, I'm Alex. It's story time. Let's get comfy and listen to the splendid stories we've found for you today. Side by side. It was clean-up day in the land of Giggle and Hoot. Everyone was tidying their houses and throwing out what they didn't want. Everyone, that is, except for Jimmy Giggle. Every time Hoot threw something away, Jimmy would say, Oh, thank you, Hoot! (laughs) That's just what I need! And he'd take it and use it for something else. Clean-up day was one of Jimmy's favourites. Hey, Hoot, let's go for a walk. We can see what everyone's up to. The two friends set out together. Hoot kept flying ahead and then racing back to Jimmy. But after a while, Hoot got bored of having to fly so slowly. Ah, Jimmy Giggle, I wish that we could fly together in the sky. That's a great idea, Hoot. I'd love that. But I'm a human and I don't have any wings. Hoot sighed. Oh, yeah, but it would be fun to travel together side by side, don't you think? Jimmy couldn't help but agree. It would be amazing, Hoot! We could whiz in and out of the clouds and wave to the birds! Yeah, that's sort of true, Jimmy Giggle. Except that when you're flying, it is very difficult to wave. They were still busy chatting when they came to the first neighbour's house. Outside the front door was a pile of wood and some cans of paint. I'll have those! But Jimmy Giggle, that's just a load of rubbish. Jimmy just smiled and put everything into his bag. Next, they came to the second neighbour's house. In the garden was an old broken fan. That's just the thing! But Jimmy Giggle, it's broken! Jimmy just smiled and opened his bag. The third neighbour's house was even better. They were throwing out a pair of old tattered curtains and pieces of cardboard. They're perfect! But Jimmy Giggle, they're really, really old. But Jimmy just smiled and filled his bag. Jimmy Giggle, what are you up to? But Jimmy didn't say anything. He was on a top secret mission and he wasn't even going to tell his best friend. When they got back to the house, Jimmy carried everything into the giggle shed. I need to have some thinking time, explained Jimmy, and he closed the door. Hoot knew there might be an idea on the way. He loved Jimmy's ideas. And he had a feeling this would be a big one. Hoot made sure he was very well behaved while Jimmy was thinking. He tried to keep himself busy. But it was hard not to peep over at the shed. There were so many strange noises. There was sawing and banging and drilling and lots of owls. Hoot knew something very special was happening. After what seemed like a very, very long time, Jimmy came out of his shed. Hoot was excited. Is the big idea finished, Jimmy Giggle? Um, oh, I'm afraid not, Hoot. I can't finish this big idea until I have some buttons. Oh, did you say buttons? Hoot puffed up with excitement. Oh, leave that to me, Jimmy Giggle. Hoot picked up the button bag in his beak and flew off across the land. He had excellent eyesight, so spotting buttons was always easy, especially when you know where to look. Hoot flew over the hills and across the river until he reached the very greenest field. There, in the middle of the field, stood a special button tree and scattered across the ground, like fallen leaves, were lots of coloured buttons. Hoot picked some up and popped them into his bag. Ah, thank you, Button Tree! He shouted and headed home. Hoot knocked three times on the shed door. Knock, knock, knock. Jimmy opened the door just a crack. Jimmy Giggle, Jimmy Giggle! I've brought you some buttons! Oh, perfect! Oh, that's just what I need. Thanks, Hoot. And he closed the door again. 
almost catching Hoot's beak. Hoot was very excited. Oh, 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 this is the most excited I've ever been! And his tummy turned over a couple of times, just like a roller coaster. <laughs> Suddenly, some strange noises filled the air. There were pops and bangs and springs! Hoot turned and stared at the shed doors. He had a feeling they were about to open. Hoot was right. The doors flew open and out came Jimmy, driving the coolest car that you've ever seen. Introducing the Gigglemobile, announced Jimmy proudly. Hoot couldn't believe how clever his friend was. Oh, wow, Jimmy Giggle. Look, you've used the wood for the body. And there's the paint on the edges. And you've even used the curtains for the seat belts. Wow. That's right. And wait until you see this. Jimmy pointed to the broken old fan that was now looking shiny and new. The fan powers the engine, he said proudly. Oh, Jimmy, this is amazing! Hoot flew all around the car in excitement. Oh, 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 Jimmy, 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 what makes this car really special are the buttons! Jimmy laughed. His friend was right. The car was covered in big round buttons. Oh, come on, Hoot. Are you ready to try it out? Hoot sat next to Jimmy and fastened his seatbelt. Let's ride! Jimmy pressed his foot on the pedal and the two friends whizzed off down the hill. Woohoo! Yeah! Oh, wow! Oh, this is so much fun, Jimmy Giggle. Oh, you haven't seen anything yet. Wait until I show you how I use the cardboard. And he leaned in and pushed a big red button on the dashboard. Hoot stared in surprise as two wings came out the sides of the car. Uh, Jimmy, uh, we seem to have some wings on the side of the car. Then Jimmy pulled a long lever and the Gigglemobile started to lift off the ground. Uh, Jimmy, uh, we seem to be lifting off the ground. Um, Jimmy, 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 we're flying! Wow! Oh, yeah. oh, 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 oh. <laughs> the two friends laughed in delight as the Gigglemobile did loop and turns in the big blue sky. They drove through the clouds and over the houses below. So this is what it's like to fly hoot. Oh, I love it. I knew you would, Jimmy Giggle. Now we can do everything together. Side, side by side. side. And the two friends did a final loop before heading home. woo <laughs> Get your listening ears ready. It's time for another story. Whose turn is it to tell a story today? Will it be Louisa? Will it be Florrie? Will it be Sam? Or will it be Georgie? Or it might be you far away. <laughs> it might. Please, will you stay? Just for five minutes more. Five minutes more, five minutes more, it's time for a story, so stay for five minutes more. It's my turn to tell a story today. This is the lovely green in the village of Fairacre, where all the children come to play. Here are two of them now. Cora and Edward. And we're best friends. Ah, mm. oh, do they like all the same things? Best friends often like the same things, don't they? Oh, they certainly do, Georgie. My favourite colour is red. And my favourite colour is red. My favourite fruit is an apple. And my favourite fruit is an apple. And my favourite game is tag. And so's mine. Coming to get you. <laughs> <laughs> now one day, a new boy came to live in the village. His name was Ernest. Cora and Edward wanted to be kind to him. Would you like to be friends with us, Ernest? Yes, please. I like your hat. Is your favourite colour blue? Yes, I love blue. And what's your favourite fruit? Oranges. 
And what's your favourite game? Grandmother's Footsteps. Oh. Ah. So they all <laughs> played Grandmother's Footsteps together. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> oh, I win! <laughs> it's time to go home now. Would you both like to come to my house for tea? I can't, Cora. I have to go to Grandpa's. But I'd love to come. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 oh. The next day, when Edward went to the village green, Cora and Ernest were already there. <laughs> Hello. You're both wearing Ernest's favourite colour. That's right, we are. And we're both eating an orange. Ernest's favourite fruit. And we're going to play Grandmother's Footsteps. Ernest's favourite game. But Edward didn't really feel like playing Grandmother's Footsteps. Because he was feeling a bit left out. That's right, Georgie. So he went away by himself, feeling very sad. Later... Cora went to find Edward. Hello, Edward. Why didn't you want to play? Well, because you were doing everything Ernest likes to do. You were wearing blue and eating oranges and playing his favourite game. Oh, Edward! I didn't want Ernest to feel left out. And I made you feel left out instead. I'm so sorry. Am I still your best friend? Of course you are! Oh. <laughs> Push! Oh. Push! <laughs> and from that day on, back on Fairacre Village Green, Edward, Cora and Ernest often all played together. They wore red and blue, and ate oranges and apples, and played tag and grandmother's footsteps. <laughs> and nobody felt left out ever again. <laughs> Let's play favourites My favourite game is hide and seek And my favourite colour is green And my favourite fruit is an apple And my favourite time is story time Oh yes, that's my favourite time too We all love story time Perhaps that's why we're all best friends Now more story time just for you on ABC Kids Listen. Grug plays cricket. One day, Grug invited Kara the carpet snake to play cricket. Grug marked out the cricket pitch and built a scoreboard. Grug bowled first. Kara swung the bat but missed the ball. She was bowled out. It was Kara's turn to bowl. Whoosh! Kara bowled the ball. Grug swung the bat and missed. The ball hit him on the nose. Kara bowled again. Grug hit the ball. It went hurtling towards Kara, who caught it in her mouth. Grug thought it was a great catch. Grug bowled and Kara was out again. Then Kara bowled and Grug hit the ball high into the air. A pelican caught the ball this time. And that was the end of the game. This is the sound of story time. Hello, my name's Carrie. Today we're going to read the story Family Forest. Jemima's going to read with us as well. Aren't you, Jemima? People often ask, who's in my family? Well, who's going to be in his family? I have two sisters, Eliza and Harriet. Do you have sisters? 
Eliza is my half-sister. Half-sister? No, she has a right leg and a right arm too. Yes, that's Eliza. She likes playing with dolls. Do you like playing with dolls? Sometimes she's my arch enemy, but most of the time she's all right. Harriet is my whole sister. Whole sister? A sister with holes? No, not like that. Yes, that's Harriet. We say whole because we're not halves. We have the same mum and the same dad. She likes playing the guitar. Do you like playing music and listening to music? This is my dad. He's called Duncan, but he answers to dad. Even when it's not me, or Eliza, or Harriet. Dad, dad, dad. Look at all the kids in the playground calling out to dad. When he's surprised, he says, well, cut off my legs and call me shorty. <laughs> he's funny, my dad. Do you have someone in your family who likes to tell jokes? Dad is married to Babs. She's my stepmum. A mum with steps? No, not like that. Or that. She's not mean. Yes, that's Babs. She looks very nice and friendly. This is my mum. I call her Jane. She says that's just the sort of family we are. Now, Rod is Jane's partner. No, not like that. Not dancing partner. Or that. Jane and Rod aren't married, but they live together. This is all of us at a picnic. We love having picnics in the park. Do you like going for picnics in the park? You do, don't you, Jemima? Rod has a son called Charlie. He's my stepbrother, but I call him my big brother. Gosh, he's very big. No, not that big. Look how big his shoe is compared to the car. That's crazy. Charlie is a painter. Oh, looks like he paints houses. No, not like that. Yes, that's Charlie. Sometimes he paints with me. Do you have a brother or a sister you like to paint with? Harriet says we need a map to work out our family. Look at them all. There's two mums, one half-sister, one whole sister, two dads, one stepbrother. They're all connected. But it's not so tricky. While some kids have a family tree, we have a family forest. That's the end of the story. Did you enjoy that, Jemima? Families come in all shapes and sizes. I have a step family. I have a mum and a dad and a stepdad and two stepsisters. What does your family look like? Bye. And now, another story. Magic Beach. beach. At our magic beach, we swim in the sparkling sea, surfing and splashing and jumping the waves, shrieking and laughing with glee. <laughs> Wild white horses are thundering past, racing to get to the land, plunging and prancing and tossing their heads, then fading away on the sand. At our beach... At our magic beach, we play in the sand for hours, digging and building with buckets and spades, invincible castles and towers. The king and the queen are trapped in the moat. A dragon is spitting out flames. Princess Belinda is charging the beast to rescue little Prince James. At our beach, at our magic beach, 
we search in the clear warm pools, peering at starfish, limpets and crabs, and tiny fish darting in schools. Into the kingdom of fishes we go, riding on sea dragons' tails. Angelfish ferry a cargo of pearls past creeping convoys of snails. At our beach, at our magic beach, we walk when it's cloudy and grey, looking for driftwood, feathers and shells washed up on the edge of the bay. A leather-bound chest with buckles of brass lies tossed on the sand by the tide. As we push back the lid, we are dazzled by light from the glittering treasure inside. At our beach, at our magic beach, we rock in the tangerine boat, paddling out to the end of the line, then drifting back to the float. The wind fills our sails as we follow the sun, and the lookout's eyes are keen. We'll navigate over the edge of the world to islands where no one has been. At our beach, at our magic beach, we laze on the jetty and wait, watching the watery shadows below for something to nibble the bait. A monstrous shark has taken the hook. It's struggling hard to break free, thrashing and crashing and fighting the line as we drag it in from the sea. At our beach, at our magic beach, we bask in the glow of the fire. The moon makes a silvery path on the sea and the waves come to shore with a sigh. A beacon is signalling up on the cliff. An answer blinks back from the bay. Smugglers are hauling in crate loads of rum, then silently stealing away. At our beach, at our magic beach, the old bed is cosy and wide. To the sounds of the ocean, we sleep through the night, adrift on the evening tide. And now it's time for a story from the Kids Listen bookshelf. Now it's time for Marigold and the Daffodils. Marigold lived in a house with a big garden. One day in the autumn, Marigold's mother said, Marigold, will you help me plant some bulbs in the garden? Marigold loved doing things with her mother, so she said, yes. She put on her scarf, her gloves and her Wellington boots and stepped outside the house into the cold, damp morning. The sky was full of clouds. There were no flowers in the flower beds, just brown earth and dead leaves. Marigold said to her mother, it all looks so sad when there are no flowers. Her mother held up a paper bag and said, Let's see what we can do about that with these bulbs in my bag. And went to the flower bed under the kitchen window. Marigold could hear whispering coming from the paper bag. We're off at last, said one voice. I hate it sitting on that shelf in this dry paper bag, said another. And one, with a deep voice, said, We should get a nice bed to lie in out in this garden. Marigold's mother said, We must plant the bulbs quite deep so that they can keep warm and feed on the soil during their winter sleep. Here, here, said the bulb with the deep voice. Marigold made little holes in the earth with a trowel and put a bulb in each one. Some of the bulbs went, Whee! as they flew through the air in Marigold's hand, and, ah, as they settled down in their comfy new bed. Marigold tucked them all up and patted the earth over them to keep them warm. Then Marigold and her mother went indoors and had a nice cup of tea and a biscuit. One day, on a cold and frosty winter morning, Marigold said, 
I think I'll go and see how the bulbs are getting on. She put on her big winter coat, her scarf, her gloves, her thick woolen socks and her Wellington boots and stepped outside the house. Everything was covered in frost and it sparkled in the sun. All she could see under the kitchen window where the bulbs were sleeping was cold earth covered in little patches of snow. Then she thought she heard something and put her ear close to the ground. She thought she could hear snoring. She ran inside to tell her mother what she had heard. Her mother gave her a big hug and said, What an imagination you've got! One day when the snow had gone, Marigold was looking out at the garden with her nose pressed against the window. She was trying to see what was happening in the flower bed below the window. Her mother said, Why don't you go and have a look? Marigold put on her outdoor shoes and stepped outside the house. The air was full of the sound of birds singing, enjoying the spring sunshine. And there were little furry catkins hanging from the birch trees. Marigold looked in the flower bed under the kitchen window. At first, she didn't see anything. But when she looked closely, she could see little green shoots poking out of the ground. Over the next two weeks, the shoots grew and grew. Soon, they were as high as Marigold's Wellington boots, and they had buds on the top where the flowers would be. Marigold's mother said the flowers should be coming out any day now. Marigold couldn't wait. She had to go and see straight away. She put on her outdoor shoes and stepped out of the house. When she knelt down to look at the shoots by the kitchen window, she heard one of them say, One last push! And to her surprise, one of the buds on the top of a shoot split open. And there, inside, was a squashed-up yellow flower. Come on, everyone, it said. It's great out here. The sun's shining and it's lovely and warm. Over the next few days, all the other flowers came out and there was soon a whole bunch of daffodils swaying on their long stalks. As you probably know, daffodils have big trumpet shapes in the middle of their flowers and when Marigold held her ear close to them, she could hear the trumpets playing. Her mother said it was just the wind blowing across the flowers, making a noise like blowing across the top of a bottle. But Marigold knew better, especially when one of the flowers asked what tune she'd like them to play. A few weeks later, when the sun was very hot, Marigold stepped outside the house in her bare feet. There was a buzzing of bees in the air. They were poking their noses into any flower they could find and sipping the nectar. The daffodils had faded, and Marigold thought they would have to cut off the drooping leaves to make the garden look tidy. But her mother knew better. She told Marigold that the bulbs would be very upset. They feed themselves on the dying leaves, making the bulbs stronger, ready for next year and it helps them grow baby bulbs stuck to their sides. Marigold knew it must be right when one of the flowers whispered to her, Your mother's quite right. I'm having a good feed on them leaves, and my kids are going to grow up big and strong. Oh, I am pleased, said Marigold, but I'll miss you during the summer. Never mind, dearie. We'll see you next year. Cheerio! Ah, how relaxing. I feel ready for a nice nap. How about you? Thank you for listening to Storytime. Hear more terrific tales on digital radio and the ABC Kids Listen app.